Newton's third law is interesting. Sometimes we say that, we state it this way, that for every action, or in the language of this course, maybe for every force, there is an equal and opposite force. Whoop, force. In other words, if you have a force vector, Newton is saying that there exists then an, another vector that is the same length, that's what the equal means, the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So equal and opposite force. One of my favorite examples to think about Newton's third law is to think about an apple. I'm not a very good artist here, but let's imagine an apple. And let's imagine that I'm holding it with my hand. So, oh boy. Okay, so here's my hand. There's my hand. There's my sleeve. Okay, you get the idea. So there are actually four different forces going on. If I'm just holding this apple, just holding it up, and it's not doing anything, so it has a velocity of zero, no acceleration, there are actually four forces. There's the force of my hand, me, on the apple. I know that's true, because if it's like an enormous 10-pound apple, my arm's going to get tired. So I know that I'm definitely applying a force onto this apple. Um, Newton says, therefore, that there's also a force of the apple on me, right? If I were in interstellar space, this I could just rest my hand gingerly neck underneath the apple, and I wouldn't have to apply any force at all, which me and I know that because I know that there's another force on the apple, and that's the force of gravity, so there's a force of the earth on the apple. Newton says, therefore, there's also a force of the apple on the earth. So Newton says that these two are equal and opposite and these two are equal and opposite. So what we mean by equal and opposite is that the things that are being done to and the things that are doing the doing are switched. Those are the Newton's third law pairs. Now, you say, yeah, but the force that I have to provide on the apple is equal to the weight of the apple. I know that's true. Yes, you know that's true by Newton's second law, that the sum of the forces is zero on the apple, on the apple. You know that because the acceleration is equal to zero. That's how you know that the sum of those forces must be zero, and therefore the force that I apply on the apple and the first force that the Earth applies on the apple have to be the same. Now, why does this matter? Why this matters is because when we're going to solve Newton's second law problems, you have to be careful not to include all of the forces in the whole problem because for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. So if you include all of them, they'll add to zero. That's what Newton is saying. If you include all the forces, they all add to zero. So when we're doing problems, you want to pick all the forces on an object, not the ones by an object, because those are just going to start canceling out the ones on the object. And finally, you might be a little worried about this idea that the apple exerts a force on the Earth. You might be thinking, really? That can't possibly be. Well, it is, and they're equal and opposite forces, and I like to think about it this way. If you let go, something's going to happen. The apple's going to fall. The apple has a teeny tiny mass, so it's going to get all of the acceleration. That's equal and opposite to the force that the apple exerts on the Earth, and the Earth has a ton of mass, therefore isn't really moving up to meet the apple. Okay, we'll get lots of chances to practice with this. It's tricky. Hang in there.